When you first realize what God is like, it's very natural and proper to respond in fear or even terror. But then God explains to you, look, there's nothing else you have to fear in life now. And now you are my child and it's an amazing feeling. And then he says, and I want you to follow Jesus. I want you to be like him. I want you to live like him. And, and you realize, wow, following Jesus, that means I, I, I give everything up. But then you realize, no, this, this is worth it. This is a good thing. This is what I want to do. But at times it, it, it may even feel overwhelming or impossible. And Jesus says, that's why I'm giving you my spirit. He's going to empower you. He's going to lead you. And he's going to enable you to accomplish this mission that I've given you on this earth. And, and so when you begin to understand these, these three interwoven entities, it's, it's like your whole world has to change. And it, it, it's like all these years you've been living one way, you've been thinking just about yourself and doing your thing, and now you realize you're a part of something bigger. It's like stepping into a whole new world um, because now you've got a mission. But what is that mission? Jesus made it clear, he says, after he rose from the grave, he says, I want you to go and I want you to obey everything that I commanded you, but I also want you to teach others to obey everything that I've commanded. This is what we call discipleship. And Jesus said, he said, I want you to go and I want you to make disciples of all the nations. I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to teach them to obey everything that I commanded you to do. While I understood that, I, 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 I never understood something until later on in my life. As I read in the scriptures, I realized God doesn't want me to do this by myself. He, he, he doesn't want me just to follow him on my own. That's why he created church, the church. He says, now you're part of a group of people. You don't do this by yourself. See, see, in my mind, when I thought of church, I would think of a building or I would think of a service. But when you read the Bible, that's not what it's talking about. In fact, if Jesus was on the earth right now and, and you ask Jesus, hey, where's the church? He's not going to give you an address or point to a building. He would explain, no, the church, those are the people on this planet who fear me, who follow me and are filled with the Spirit. We now, before God, should have a fellowship together, a sharing, not just of thoughts, ideas, but a sharing of everything to really care for one another. And that's this idea of a fellowship. It's, it's sharing as a family, it's sharing as a, like, like a body, like a temple, we're, we're, we're part of something bigger. And, and this word fellowship is so huge in the Bible. And, and this drives me crazy because for so much of my life, it was almost like an afterthought. When I would think of fellowship, I would think, oh, there was that one part of the church building called the Fellowship Hall, and, uh, and, and after, uh, after our gathering on Sunday morning, we would go in the Fellowship Hall, and one guy would bring dessert, another guy would bring cupcakes, another guy would bring some meat, another, you know, and we'd have this thing called the potluck in the Fellowship Hall, and so that meal together was fellowship, or, or in church we would have fellowship night where, where we get together and play softball, and, and so to us, that's fellowship. But in the Bible, man, it is so much more intense than that. In the Bible, man, there's this, this, this awesome passage in, in Acts 4, verse 32, and it says that the full number of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. And then it says it's that no one, no one claimed that any of his possessions belonged to himself. 
but instead that they would, uh, they, would, they would share everything in common and they would give as people had need. There was a sense of mission together. This is what he meant by fellowship. Now that's, that's a lot different from a potluck. It's this idea that we're one now. We're family. There was this guy um, that came to my church once, and and he was a part of a gang, and uh, and decided to ditch everything and and follow Jesus, and he got baptized. And after a while, though, he stopped coming to the, the church gatherings, and and one of my buddies asked him, they go, hey, what, where you been? He, he says, when I got baptized, he goes, I thought that it was gonna be like when I got jumped into the gang. He goes, when I got jumped into my gang, he goes, suddenly everyone had my back. We became like a family 24 seven. He says, so when I got baptized, I thought this is what's gonna happen with the Christians. He goes, I, I didn't know that it was just Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. He goes, I thought it was gonna be family. So he goes, I, I just had it wrong in my head. And yet when I heard that, I thought, no, you got it right. We've got it wrong. And, and honestly, it was heartbreaking because I thought the gangs are a better picture of family than the church is. The gangs are a better picture of the body than, than we are. They're having a fellowship and a sharing that we don't see in the church of Jesus Christ. And yet that's the very thing that Jesus wanted for us. You see, even this mission that we've been sent on, he says, we together, we're supposed to together proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. This idea of, of, of proclaiming it, I, I can't do that without other people. See, I can talk about Jesus. I can talk about Jesus by myself, but I can't show Jesus to other people. Here's what I mean. I can tell you, Jesus forgives you, Jesus forgives you, Jesus is forgiving. But that's not enough. God says, I want you to show Jesus to the world. So that means I need my brothers and sisters around me and we offend one another, but we keep forgiving. And then suddenly the world looks on and goes, man, I've never seen that before. You guys just keep forgiving each other. You see, unity is so strange in our world. We live in a time when people are so quick to ditch one another. God says, I want my church to be different. I want this one group of people that are devoted to sharing their lives together, sharing this mission together. When someone offends you, you forgive them. And then suddenly people are seeing the attributes of Christ. They're seeing it in the flesh. It's almost like that. what Jesus did in putting God to flesh so that we could dwell amongst him, he says, now that's the church's responsibility. I want you to love each other so much. And when you do that, they'll actually see God. His plan was fellowship. His plan, he says in John 17, when Jesus is praying, he, he says to God, he goes, I and them, you and me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you have sent me. There's something about our unity that makes the message believable. And that's why we can't do it by ourselves. Look, if I'm perfectly honest, I am far more comfortable doing this by myself. It's a lot easier. I don't have to put up with different personalities and, 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 and different arguments. It's, it's just nicer. Let me just have my own relationship with God. But God says, that's not what I designed you for. Here's the mission, I need you to show Jesus to the world by the way that you interact with one another and love one another. So if I'm to accomplish this mission that God's given me, I need others with me. I gotta have them with me. And if you think about it, this is how he designed human beings. 
we weren't meant to live in isolation. And this completely flies in the face of those who say, I've got my relationship with God. I don't need the church. I don't need, you know, these little gatherings or, you know, I love Jesus. I just hate the church. We can't say that. You're going against everything Jesus asked you to do. God says, I designed you to be together. It's so beautiful when you work together and have one heart, one mind, one soul. And he says, and I'm going to do this. The beautiful thing, Jesus said 2,000 years ago, I will build my church and the gates of hell won't stand against it. I will create this type of supernatural unity and gathering. And, and so it's not something that we have to force like, okay, let's, let's do the fellowship thing. Let's make it happen. No, God says, I'm going to make it happen. And the question is, is do you want to be a part of it? Do you want to have this sharing, this fellowship that God intended for his church? Or do you want to continue living in isolation? It's an exciting time right now because I'm seeing God just bring people from all the different all different parts of the world and they're all having the same conviction of church was meant to be more. There was supposed to be a greater unity and everyone's feeling the same thing. Everyone's sensing the same thing going, the way we've been doing it doesn't seem biblical. When I read in the Bible, there should be a deep love. It's not just a bunch of people coming in a room and staring forward. It's a family, it's a body, and I'm talking to these people. It's, it's been really weird where they're going, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. We're all thinking the same thing. Why? Because there's one spirit, and he's leading us all to this conviction of things have got to change. There needs to be this fellowship in the church again, and this is something Jesus is doing. If you fear God and you've decided to follow Jesus with your life and you really have his spirit in you, then you're my brother, you're my sister. Like in God's eyes, when he looks down, he sees us as family and he wants us to live that way. And that's what he means by fellowship.